Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Oh! Alrighty, coffee's is always for closers. This is 312 and 1. They're talking about the New York Giants in the 2022 season. It's Tim from Online Big Blue. It's OGR Sports. It's bringing it to you. It's funky. It's fresh. It's fly. Everything we need to talk about about this off, not this off season, I should say, about the OTAs, about the mini camp, about everything's going on because we got a long way to go before we hit into what we refer to as the silly season, which would be training camp. Mr. OGR Sports, what's going on, my friend? I'm doing fantastic. I can't wait to dive in the Giants. It's been a little while, Tim. We had trouble getting together. We did. We did. We, we, we sound like one of those couples. Your schedule just didn't, it just wasn't conducive with mine. You didn't love me anymore. That's what <laughs> that it is was. true. That, that is, is true. true. So, <laughs> I can't ban you from here because we're not live. But if I was live, you would be banned by now. Oh, no, I would definitely be in the background. Yeah. You would be in the background. I would be at forefront as always. I want to talk about these G-men. I want to talk about something right off the bat. Because I, I see, I try to stay off Twitter, which is a lie. I don't trust you on Twitter. And I see, I see generalized stupidity. And I'm not going to point anyone out. I should, but I'm not going to because I'm, 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 I'm a kinder, gentler Tim. No, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm an asshole. We have Darius. We have Darius Slayton. We have the smooth sounds of Kenny G. And it seems that these are the people that giant fans or content creators or social mediaites have now taken their ire and directed at. We need to get rid of Darius. I did a whole video about why it wasn't Darius's fault. I did a video about Kenny G when some of it was his fault. But you all of a sudden want to move on from your two actual, and I could do this because we're also on YouTube right now, quote unquote, real wide receivers. And you want to have the Smurfs, the 80s fun bunch. You want to have Wondell Robinson and Kadarius. I couldn't find a cleat to get to fit Tony, David Sills. Who are you supposed to throw? Oh, but don't worry. Bellinger's there. Bellinger is going to save the day because he's the greatest tight end since Shockey, Bavaro, Bob Tucker that ever never put on the pads for the Giants. <laughs> now, I have a question. I'm going to I want to talk to you about I want to talk to you about our old pal Kenny G first. I want to I want to talk about Kenny G first because I always see these people now, and this is what pisses me off because it's for the likes, it's for the clicks, it's for the bleeps and the boops. It's for the fact that we need to trade Kenny G. We need to send him to Chicago for a sixth round pick uh, and whatever. God forbid we ever look at his contract and see exactly what would happen if we moved on from the venerable Kenny G. You know the contract better than I, so just fill me on the contract. I'm going to fill you in on the contract. Right now, he's got a dead cap number of 31 million. He's got a cap hit of 21. 23, he's got a dead cap number of 14.7 million against a cap hit of 17. So you're saving a little over six. And then in 2024, he's still got a $21 million cap number, but still almost a $7 million dead cap space number. So over two seasons, that dead cap number is going to be over 20 million. Over 52 if you count 2022. Now, you trade him, that cap does not automatically just disappear. Poof, it's gone. No, the Giants are responsible for some of that cap space. <laughs> so and you're it's, gonna, how much, it's how much the Bears want to pick up, really. And, and so basically, they're not going to want to pick up anything. Why would you want to pick up anything? You have the Giants over a barrel. Exactly. But don't worry, we're going to trade him. <laughs> we're going to okay. trade him. Okay, the most logical person to trade, and it's not logical to trade him because you need starting outside wide receivers. What, were you going to depend on C.J. Board? Who's yep. still on the team, if I'm not mistaken? He uh, is. I'm not a big C.J. Board fan. Great special all. teamers. Decent he's a good special teamer. teamer. He's a decent special teamer. I, I think he's I think he's a good special teamer. I don't think he's over. I think he's a good special teamer. See, it's the kinder, gentler Tim. Yeah, but, you know, he's there's a reason why he's a special teamer. Right. Because he's not a starting caliber wide receiver. Right. And we're about to hear my son in about two seconds go, hi, daddy. Uh, I love you, buddy. I'm recording right now. I'm recording. I'm recording. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Go, go, go. Father so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, so I'm recording. <laughs> all right. So, but anyways, you want to go so ahead? We only have two starting wide receivers. CJ Board can't take over that thing. Still can't really step in and do anything. So where are you getting your starting outside wide receivers? Because it's not Kadarius Tony, and it's not. I mean, he can play the outside, but he's a Smurf. And same with Wendell Robinson. Like, where are you getting it? Both all these guys need to be on this roster. You need as much talent as possible because this team is still starving of talent. So I don't get the logic of trading these guys. The only person that makes a little bit of sense to trade is Darius Slayton, but we need him. And that's the problem. You need that you need him. That's that's what you need. Say say with me, everyone. You need him. Now let's just for fun. Let's just let's just see who's on the giant roster. So Alex Bachman's not floating your boat. Nope. CJ Definitely Board. I don't like him, but he's going to be make it the roster for special teams. Doss, the second year wide receiver out of UC Davis. Didn't even know he was on the roster. Uh, Robert Foster, the former Miami reject. I yeah. forgot about Robert Foster, but okay. Richie James, who is in his fifth year from Middle Tennessee, who they are raving about the coaching staff for his quickness. <laughs> Colin Johnson, third year out of Texas. <clears throat> Austin Prohl. Any of these guys exciting you yet? Austin Prohl, is that son of Ricky Prohl? I don't think <laughs> I wonder now because I don't know. I have to look that up. Sterling Shepard, of course, is coming off the injury, so we we can't uh, count on him. David Sills, no, everybody's favorite. Kadarius Tony. Okay, these are your selections of wide receivers that are on the giant roster right now, that are currently sitting here. So none of them excite you. None of them excite me because I don't. It, it's not a reliable wide receiver group. I'm not saying there isn't talent. Talent's great, but what makes talent better is consistency. Where are you getting the consistency from? Somebody out there, show me where you're getting the consistency. There is none. Kenny G. Who is mostly injured. Well, Jones, mostly injured. Wanda Robinson, who is, who is a big question mark. Who is a big question mark. And Darius Slayton, who's been up and down his career because all of a sudden we stopped targeting him. And St and Sterling Shepard, who's coming off an injury, coming off exactly. a fairly serious injury, and that's another guy who rather play the slot. Yes, you can play him outside, but he's better in the slot. Are but you, you have three guys right off the top of my head in Tony Shepard and Robinson who are better suited for the slot. Last yeah. time I checked, you only play like one slot receiver, <laughs> unless you're going four wide all the time. With our offensive line, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you want to get Daniel Jones killed? That's probably the good way to do it. That's probably. I mean, I, I, I guess. I guess what Giants fans figure we're just going to go four wide every time. But I keep seeing this that we have this this overabundance of wide receivers. That's what. That's why we could trade. That's why we could trade Slayton. That's why we could trade Kenny G. Could we have this overabundance of it? Of these players, yeah, but overabundance like one injury, and then where's your overabundance? But I want to know where the overabundance is. <laughs> I can under, I can, there's teams that are deeper than we are at wide receiver. Everybody sees perceived talent and thinks that's what's going to happen. I agree. That's it. Perceived talent is projected talent, which always doesn't project once you get onto the field. I mean, if you take a look at this roster right now. I, I am looking at the wide receiver position and I am saying to myself, Tim, because that's what I say to myself when I talk to myself, I see maybe two guys on here that I have any warm, fuzzy feeling about. And one of them, and maybe even two of them, are guys that people want to trade. I am yeah. not I am not a Kenny G fan. Not at all. Said this, said this before they even brought him in. I said that I talked to people in Detroit and they were like, bye, you take him. <laughs> He's not worth the money. He's had two good seasons, called himself baby, Me baby Megatron. All of his most majority of his touchdowns came in one season. He hasn't done anything really since, but you know what? He's still a professional outside wide receiver. Is he a game changer? Is he a Pusco Burris? No. He can, I mean, he has potential to be. No, not even close. Plex had speed. Plex was able to bully people to get the ball, bullied them to get the ball. Kenny doesn't do that. And they're like, well, he's a 38% contested catch grabber. Well, that's great. But you know what? 
you're also you need to be like a 65 to 70 percent catch ratio as a wide receiver so your catch ratio goes down to less than half at when you're going up against a contested pass <laughs> on what your average should be i mean i i don't get what people see honestly like uh, I, it, it, it's just the foolishness of Terry uh, trading Darius Slayton. I mean, Wendell Robinson hasn't even played a snap in the NFL, and we're just we're going to anoint this guy. Percy Harvin or Tavon Austin? Neither. Did like I'm, 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 I, I, you know, if the, the, like we have that in Kadarius Tony, I just think he's, you know, a lesser Kadarius Tony with equally as bad route running. See, I don't think Wandell's route running is as bad as Kadarius Tony's. I don't. I don't. I don't. I. Where would I rank him if I, if I had a one being the worst and ten being the best in reference to route running? I would put him at a solid five. I put Kadarius like a three and a half. Yeah, but Kadarius with one more season in the NFL probably is a five or six. See, I don't know. <laughs> here's we, my yeah, exactly. We don't know because we here's need to my see. problem. He hasn't even. He only got into mandatory minicamp after the scuttlebutt of potential trade rumors, did he all of a sudden fly his ass in? And it's not like he has been out on the field (laughs) practicing his route running because the only way you get better at route running in the NFL is to practice. But Tim, he's got a promising route career. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Not even close. Not even close. I mean, he's. I mean, I listen. I listen. I'm a hip hop guy. Everybody, anyone that watches my channel knows I'm a hip hop guy. I'm an old school rap guy. I used to live downtown. Once on actually come back. Everything's rugby parties. Girls in the park. Nothing but girls after dark. We chill. Nobody gets ill at the place that we call the hell. But you know what? He's not Cool Modi. He's not LL Cool J. He's not the Snoop Dogg. He 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 is not Tupac. He's not Biggie. Hell, I don't even think he's Will Smith. Can he mumble rap though? <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, and, I, and I'm not. I'm not trying. Listen, I'm. I'm not trying to beat down the kid on his rap career because if I'm not one of these guys that sit there and says he's he's off the you know his off the field antics are are disturbing his on the field progress. I don't believe in that. I believe when you're off time, you can do whatever the hell you want to do as long as you come up and show up and practice. But the problem is he's not showing up to practice. Honestly, I, I I I hate to say this about a guy second year in his career because I say I give everybody three years, but I have a strong feeling we won't see Kendarius Tony Plus three years. I really don't. He has all the talent in the world, and I just think he might be a washout. I, I hope he proves me wrong. I just I, I get that feeling from him, and I I I, I want to be wrong when I say that because that's another first round pick that didn't pan out. Well, and of course, as you're sitting this wearing a Darius Slayton jersey. So I think so. I think we all know who you're rooting for. I, I am, but I brought. But honestly, I bought this when he, he when he was in his rookie season. It's a bear pass coach jersey, isn't it? No, seriously. Don't I turned it around, but then, yeah, people would be frightened by what they see underneath. Don't lie. <laughs> Don't lie. I mean, but do you see him out of the Giants via necessity for them to just move on for him, or do you see that he created his own? issues that they had to move on from him. I see him creating his own issues that they had to move on from him because this this current coaching staff, this current regime does not have is not beholden to him. And he has to do everything in his power to prove that he belongs on this team. You know, we don't know, I mean, what Brian Dable, what Joe Mr. Shane had him projected at in Buffalo. Because you rate and you project all players when you're going to get ready to draft them. We don't know where he was on the Buffalo draft board. So how do they feel about this guy? You know, did they have a strong feeling about him? I don't know. So it's just like you, you know, even though you're in your second year, you have a load to prove to a new coaching staff. They didn't draft you. They're not beholden to you. You are a rookie or well, second year guy. Second they year. can move off of you at will. Okay. And yeah, Giants fans may get angry and may get mad. But it's it's not unheard of. So I and and that's how I feel about Kadarius. I mean, he had one good game. We've pointed this out numerous times. 
Without Daniel it, Jones as quarterback. Without most of it, without Daniel Jones as quarterback. Exactly. All right. I want to do a new segment here. Oh, OG. great. Bring OG. that on me. OG never, OG there's never there's nobody prepared, prepared on this show. Nope. There's, no, there's no preparedness. There's no preparedness. I'm doing a new segment. I'm going to call this segment Heroes or Legends or Busts. And I'm going to go through the giant roster right here. And I want you to just, and I, it's going to be early, but I want you to tell me who's going to be a bust or who's going to be a giant legend or even just a good player. All right. So we're going to start our new segment. There's heroes and there's legends. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. All right. Do you like that? I even had, I even had intro stuff to come on to it. I'm impressed. I, I'm impressed too. Adoree Jackson. Good player. Good player, but is he is he is how good of a player? Where where are we ranking him here for this team? Where am I ranking him on this team? Yeah. It, it's it's a solid you know good player, solid contributor, looking to be a number one. I don't think he's quite number one. He's number two. He's going to be asked to do more than he's capable of. Oh, <laughs> you said number two. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm also going to go now with Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence bust. Really? I, I not fit. Well, tell me why. Tell me why before I ask. One, he doesn't fit into the wing system as well as many people may think. He's not a traditional, like, you know, traditional no. He's, he's, he's not a nose tackle, and that's what we need on this team. And he's not your traditional defensive end in a three-four scheme. Nope. He's not a Jim Burt. He's not an Eric Howard. He's 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 not that he's not that guy that clogs the middle. He's not so it, it could he be a good player somewhere else? Sure. In a four three scheme where he's the other DT. That's okay. what I think he belongs. Our next player. King of the almost sack. I knew you were going to tell him. I knew it was coming. King of the almost sack. For what we gave away and what we signed him for, he's a bust on that. Is he a good player in the NFL? Yes. Where do you rank him? Because he's listed. Now, remember this. He fought to be listed as a defensive end. So he's being paid as a defensive end. Where do you rank him in, in the, in the, where would you rank him in the, in the, in the annals of the defensive ends right now in this league? At in one this th league? Yes, oh, in this league. Lord, in this league. league. Spot. No, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to give, you don't have to give me like who's ahead of him, but would you rack him in the top 10? No. Or would you rock, or would you put him in the top 20? Maybe top 25. So he would be anywhere between 25 to 30. Yes. So we're paying him forty bazillion dollars to be the defensive stalwart, and you only rank him in the top tw potentially in the top twenty-five, the top thirty. It's not. I believe he, he's a DT in a four-three scheme. That's I don't, what I, I don't. I don't. I don't even see that because he's not. He, unless he's got a big body. He had what's his name Wilkerson. Well, Next actually, I knew you were going to hear. I I knew you were going to ask me this question. Okay. okay? I don't know how about, 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 minutes, no. Well, no, no. I knew, I knew Dexter or not Dexter Lawrence. Well, Leonard Williams. Williams was going to come up. Because I did a video. And yeah, obviously, but I knew it was going to come up. And if you look at a scouting report, he's a jack of all trades, master of none. Like he can play the three connect, three technique, he can play the five technique. You know, he's a jack of all trades, master of none. So how can you rank somebody like that? You know, it's not Aaron Donald. He's he's not a force of nature. He's a good player in this league and be a productive player in the right scheme. It's just not with the Giants in a wing system. And that's what I'm getting at. That's why I'm calling him bust. Oh, no. You said he was a good player. You didn't say he was a bust. No, no, no. I said he's a bust for what we're paying him. Well, that's he's what I'm talking about. He's care a good what he's player in this league. He's just a bust for the Giants. Now, the biggest question to this, is he a $45 million dead cap space number for the league? No. Like he doesn't is I mean, wait, wait, is he a thirty-five million dollar dead cap space number for the league? Thirty-five million dead cap space number. I believe he's between the ten and fifteen million dollar range. All right. So when the year, so next next year when he's only an eight million dollar dead cap number, that's okay. You're okay with get that. Rid, no, still get rid of him. He doesn't fit your scheme. Why would you keep he him? He doesn't fit and I try to explain this to people. The Giants really unless DJ Davidson's gonna be something special. You, you, well, I don't know. Like I said, we don't, I mean, I know he's what, 27? He's an older kid. He's not an older kid. <laughs> he's an older man, not as old as I am, 
but he's a big man. Is he a Dalvin Tomlinson type? I don't think so. I don't, I don't see him. I don't see him be. A, I don't, is he a Joseph? No, I don't think so. But he could be a guy that's going to plug the middle, yeah, in which will free up our defensive ends. Because, and and I, I, I mentioned this before. The majority of the sacks from the Wings defense come from the outside linebacker position. If you go over the last four years, Juden, of course, is was listed as a. Uh, outside linebacker, but he played defensive end as well. But they are still relied upon at times to drop back into coverage. Do you see Leonard Williams being able to do that? No, <laughs> unless he unless he loses 50 pounds. I like that pounds. answer. But Juden is like 6'3", 275. And he still dropped back into coverage. <laughs> at I mean, does Leonard have the ability, like – from an athletic standpoint to do that, probably he's a good athlete. Okay. Well, I mean, he's never been asked to do that. So what kind of production are you going to get from even in a veteran in this league? He's a good player in this league. I'm not going to sit there and say he's not, but he's being overpaid with the giants in a scheme that he doesn't fit in. Doesn't fit in now. Right now. No. Okay. All right. We're going to, we're going to, we're moving away from Leonard Williams, Andrew Thomas, Andrew Thomas, giant legend. Really? Mm-hmm. Is this the year that Thomas makes that leap? Like really solidifies himself? Barring injury, I think yes. Okay. Barring injury. So I'm right, I'm gonna write all this down for you. Okay. Next player, Alex Bachman. That's what she said. Sorry. <laughs> it was supposed to be. That's that's a joke, right? Yes, it was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> I think the biggest player we're gonna and the last player on this segment is going to be Daniel Jones. No, I got two players, but Daniel Jones. Oh, oh. is he with the team next year? No. All right. We're gonna move on from Daniel because we're we're trying not to pick on Daniel Jones anymore. Yeah. Because it's just rude to pick on Daniel Jones. So we're just gonna we're just gonna move on from him and we're gonna go from the last player. Can you figure out who the last player is gonna be? Saquon Barkley. How do you know that? <laughs> I'm trying to find the Saquon Barkley uh I'm trying to find the Saquon Barkley sound effect. It's Daniel Jones at the top. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Daniel Jones. At- I thought we were moving on from Daniel Jones. <laughs> uh never mind. All right, Saquon Barkley. Don't make me do this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I don't make me do this because I love I love me some Saquon. I okay. tell these people all the time. I remind people on this podcast all the time. I'm a Penn State fan. Right. I followed him since his freshman year in college. He is probably the best college running back I have ever watched. That you have ever watched? Okay. Okay. I mean, there's there's guys out there, but in my that I've ever watched in my time, there's guys that were better. You know. Back in the day, maybe Herschel Walker, Barry Sanders, Billy in Sims, Archie Griffin. But what I watch personally, he's one of the best. You know, he's top twenty-five all time as far as college running backs. I would put him in that list. Um, you know what he can do on a field is magical. <clears throat> but you are he what he's going to command as a salary, especially if he has a breakout season and, and gets back to what he was pre ACL injury. He's a bust. Okay. And I hate saying that. That's why I said, please don't make me do this because I love Saquon. I want to see him succeed. I want him to prove me wrong. I want the Giants to re-sign him if it's a team-friendly deal, but I just don't see that happening. I see the Giants walking away at the end of the season. Pro, And this is kind of where I was leading into. Pro Football Focus has stated that over the next three years, the Giants, I believe, are, are, are 10th best in regards to the Sadler Cap situation. So that'd be counting 2023, 2024, and 2025. Um, that they will have the ability to, to potentially sign and move people. I mean, I'm you know, without moving like Leonard Williams and some other people, you're looking at 54 million next year. 2024, you're looking at a total cap space of 172 million. In 2025, you know, you you potentially be looking at more than that. Um, but I don't think that the Shane wants to build this team through free agency. 
I don't. And either. one of, and one of the reasons why, and this is kind of circling back, one of the reasons why I don't think they'll ever move on from Kenny G this year or potentially even next year because they're still dead large dead cat number, is if you go back to the Logan Ryan issue. Logan Ryan, we could have saved like four million dollars on the contract, but we with the June with the post June first designation, but we would have incurred another three million dollars in dead cap, cap space next year. So he 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 elected to take. It's only seven hundred fifty thousand in savings, so he wouldn't have the accumulative value of three million on the cap next year for Logan Ryan, which I under which I understood, which which I I didn't get it at the time, because you're still looking at dead cap money at eleven million dollars for Logan Ryan this year, eleven million dollars for James Bradbury, four million dollars still for Nate, two million dollars for Kyle. I'm abs- I mean, it's just I understand what he's doing. He's trying not to push out the money. So my point is this. And this is what I was trying to explain to people. We are not moving on from Kenny because of the fact that he is not going to incur $13 million next year and $8 million for a player that's not going to be on the team anymore. I think that's what the Shane Anot is doing. He's, he's trying to get out from under all these bad contracts, and it may hurt in the beginning. It might sting a little, but in the long term, it's a better situation for the organization. That is 100% true, but what happens if Kenny has another stinker of a season this year compared to what he had last year? And we all cry. Yeah, we all cry, but he's a player like – like, what do you do? Like, do you keep a player like that on the roster? Here's my thing. Is is he a – there have been plenty of teams that have kept players that – were underperforming under the contracts before you know when it reached a point where then it was financially fiscally sound to get rid of them. If he's not a cancer on the team, if he if he's not being an a hole, yeah, I could see that they could keep him next year as well. Yeah, but like let's say he goes out there and has another stinker of a season, battles through injury, maybe have some you know, off the field things, but maybe he has some family issues. We don't know. And it keeps him out for an extended period of time. You know, he doesn't score any touchdowns. And let's say he hits like, you know, 300, 400 yards receiving. Now, here's my point. This is where I was going. You, It's a trop. Yeah, you you can trap me all you want. You walked into the trop. No. How, much, how much of that is Kenny and how much is that on the quarterback? How much is on the – Because it, what it, happens? what happens if he throws up a stinker, Daniel Jones has a stinker, and then 2023, we get somebody anew. Do you then all of a sudden, like we did for Daniel Jones for four years, he needs to have the right pieces around him. Well, I fully believe the Giants are going to draft a quarterback in next year's draft. I think everybody Depending has. on where, yeah, I mean, every all the all the content creators are already starting to hint toward next year's draft. Which I knew, which I called them doing months ago. You even did. though they were sitting there encouraging, oh, Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones. You did. They're already started. Yes. Not me. No, of course you. I didn't, like, I didn't. not of course you, like talking about, like, you know. I like, haven't done that yet. Not yet. I haven't done that yet, but I'm not going to do that until the season's over. Yeah. I know, but like, they're already hinting toward it. <clears throat> oh, uh, I know. And, you see it on Twitter as well. You see, you see tons of it on Twitter. Like, we're gonna draft the kid out of Florida. We're, we're gonna get the kid out of Kentucky. Wait well, a minute, you still got a kid. I'm telling you right now, Will Levis will be a bust in the NFL. Mark my words. I have already have. I think other people have marked your words as well with that. So we shall, we shall see. I love me some. Will, I love me some Will Levis, and it was a big mistake by the Penn State Nittany Lions to let him go, allow him to into the transfer portal and go to Kentucky. Big, big mistake. But he's going to be a bust. But he's going to be a bust. He's an excellent college quarterback. Don't get me wrong. I just don't see him, you know, being a – he has a strong arm. He's athletic. I just don't see the accuracy in his throws. You Look at the catches that Wandell has made when Will Levis is throwing in the ball and tell me that's a great – that's a great pro-quality quarterback. Maybe the wide receiver is just awesome. No, it's not even that the wide receiver is just awesome. It's just yeah, he's, he has decent hands. Congratulations, you know how to catch. You know how to catch above you and to the side of you. I have a seven year old that can do the same thing. So is your, okay. So is he going to Kentucky? No, it's just his dad's a horrible thrower of the ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have one last question today because you know what? There's not really a lot to talk about because we're in the silly season. But I got a question for you. 
And I and this is an interesting question. Before we go into the uh, OG final segment of the OG final thoughts, I keep seeing and hearing the improvement on the Giants' offensive line. How we are going to be better than last year. How we are going to be better than the year before because we have Mr. Glowinski, we have Mr. Feliciano, Shane Lemieux is going to come in and and turn things around. Evan Neal is going to be that stud that we know he can be. And we have Andrew Tony, and also we have Max Garcia. Did you just say Andrew Tony? <laughs> Did I say Andrew Tony? <laughs> and, Andrew Thomas, Andrew Tony. What the hell? I gotta stop mixing up my. I gotta stop mixing up my now my my videos. You can take your <laughs> you can take the Italian hat off now, please. Oh my god, I, I got too much. I got too much going on today. But what is your thought process right now on the offensive line? Four new starters out of five, all for. Basically, majority are free agents. What's my thought process is any line, it doesn't matter how many studs you have on the line, it needs to gel. It needs to play together. It needs to stay together for a decent amount of time. When's the last time we've had an offensive line where we've had the same starters for like two years in a row? Two years in a row? Yeah. All five starters? All five starters, two years oh. in a row. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm not even I'm not even asking it as an open-ended question because I know you're not gonna be able to tell me because I don't know the answer either. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Guys, for the people who are watching on YouTube, leave it in the comment section below. Yeah, because I'm curious. Are you sold on Feliciano? Jose no, Feliciano. Not, I like Jose. I'm not, I'm not sold on Feliciano. I'm not sold on Glowinski. Oh, wait, let's talk about Feliciano first because we had the Nick Gates experiment. And you know, it's I'm not going to say it didn't go well, but he, he, to me, he proved himself to be what I thought a guard playing center would be. Feliciano's got about 300 snaps under his belt in, what, in eight years in the league and is going to be coming in here and asked to man at some point. It's, everyone will say it's the left tackle position, but it could be one of the most important positions on that line because, considering you're responsible not only for getting the ball to your quarterback, but you're also responsible for line adjustments and everything else. And you're kind of the you're kind of the second field general as the center, which is why I think we had some issues when Nick Gates was in there because he, he was learning the position. But you got another guy who's a who's a veteran learning this learning this. Any, I mean, I, am I the only one that's sitting there going, this could be a recipe for disaster? I don't know if it's going to be a recipe for disaster because I still think he's better than what we had last year, even though those guys were starting caliber center or not even starting caliber, they were backup centers, if you will, Mister the dude we got from Cincinnati price, right? Mm -hmm. Price is gone. Yeah, no, but I still think Feliciano will be better than price. That's not saying much though. That's like saying garbage is better than trash. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm not telling you a disaster would be Billy price. Um, But Billy, Price. what I'm telling you is he's going to be good. enough. I am not defending Billy price, but Billy price is and was a center. How many just you don't even have to look at the roster. How many centers do you think right now, true centers, do you think right now we have on this roster? Zero. Right. <laughs> right. So a recipe for disaster is having Feliciano suck and go into Max Garcia. Hey, you want to try you want to try playing center? <laughs> well, no. I mean, this is where you you know, as a Giants fan, you have to put you know, even me and you, and you're going to disagree. You got to put a little trust in the people that took over your organization. Didn't people do that the last two seasons? Wasn't I told that the last two years? I understand. We have to trust told the, I, I had so many comments saying we have to trust the process. I don't we trust must, the process. I, no, we must trust it. We you must know, literally you, not listen to anything else and go in there with our blinders on like a horse and trust the process. No, I'm not saying going with your blinder on, but what I am telling you is Brian Dable come in here, Kafka, all these guys, new offensive line coach, all these guys come in here. They made, they were, you know, during free agency, they were talking about the thing. They could have went out and got themselves a, a center or even one in the draft, and they didn't do it because they believed in Feliciano. It might be a recipe for disaster. You're absolutely right. But at some point, I got to say, okay, this is a new regime. Prove me wrong. Right? 
How many? No. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe. No. How many times did the Giants not draft linebackers? And we always we always had that next linebacker we were going to find in free agency. Or we had someone on the roster that was going we to be had a quality linebacker drafted. In, yeah, I wouldn't even say it's Clint Sinton. <laughs> we haven't had a draft quality linebacker drafted since Jesse Armstead. And he was like what in the seventh round, twelfth round, something crazy. <laughs> yeah, so he was late. He was late in the draft. Here's the thing. It, every two years, it's we have to have blind faith. It's and I'm, I'm not putting years, blind. I'm, I'm no no. Let me finish. Let me finish. And it's always, it's a new regime. We have to give them time. No, you have now had ten years. Ten years. Three different regimes now in ten years. Four tech. No four. Four. You had you had you had the doo doo, you had the Shermer, you have the Juggernaut, and now you have the Dable. Ten years, four regimes. It's when can we? It's, What's it's that? Not four. I, see, I I count regimes. That's four head coaches. I count as regimes because I count uh, a team as a regime. A, a, a regi- you want to count as a regime? I don't only because it, it's bad enough going through two general managers in the times. For, Time frame we've gone through them, but to me, a regime is a general manager. And I will manager. rephrase that: four coaching regimes. All right, there you go. And I've heard the same thing every time with every one of these coaches. We have to give them time. We have to let them maturate, find their way. No, you don't have to let them find the way or match. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> but oh no, you're not, and you're you're probably you might maybe one hundred percent right on John Feliciano. And the fact that it will be a disaster and it will be an open gate. I'm not saying it's going to be a center. disaster. I'm not going to say it's going to be a disaster. But it's something to worry about. Yeah. When you play when you play blackjack and you, you take the insurance when you're playing blackjack, you know, because, you know, dealer could be sitting there with 21. We're not, we have no insurance at the center position. Nope. We have nothing. We had no, we had no, we had no quality reserves or backups last year in the offensive line position. And we were told all the guys that we had on the roster, were going to be also because we trusted the regime. I'm telling you people this, and I'm telling giant fans this. I've been a giant fan since 76. I've been going to games since 76. And I'm going to tell you this right now. You can't, it's great to have faith, but when it's blind faith and you're just, and I'm not, I'm not saying you OGR, but if when it's blind faith and you are just trusting and you are not questioning you to me are not a fan because of the fact that anyone can sit there and cause I will tell you this right now, anyone can sit there and be, I'm a giant fan. Everything's great. Everything's awesome. But these are the same people when we're four and 10 that are jumping off the ship. And then start questioning things. If you start questioning things from day one and think for yourself and think as not a, just a giant fan, but as a football fan and look at the roster organization organizationally and say, you know what? There are a lot of holes in this roster. And I've been saying that and you've been saying that, but there are also, to me, there are extremely, and I, like I said, I am giving the giants this year. I'm giving it to them because I think they're going to win four games, and I think anything over that's going to be gravy. But if you look at the roster, the way it's constructed, there are many holes that you are like, you are less than an injury away from maybe winning two games. But it's partially, part of that is not all Joe Sheen's fault. Now you can sit there no. and say, okay, the way he constructed roster, but if it wasn't center, if he didn't take a sacrifice at center, let's just say, it would have been somewhere else. You who's, your sec- you- who's your second corner? Exactly. Who's your second? Who's your safety alongside Xavier McKinney? Like there was, you, there was- someone else tells me Yusef Corker. I'm gonna be like uh. Yusef Corker, Tim. You. I'm gonna be like, wait a minute. So we're gonna we are relying on an undrafted free agent who's has coverage issues to be our safety to be to start like to start alongside. Well, what happened to Belton? Did he get injured? So we're going to rely on a seventh round draft choice <laughs> to be our starting safety. Uh, I, 
what happened to our good friend Julian Love, Tim? We're all going to rely on a guy who got benched last year, only came back via injury, and played in the slot My to be our starting is, safety. It's fine to question because I, I run in this at work. Can we just segment right into OGR's thing? We're going to segment I, into now OGR's final thoughts. My he's, final thoughts. Because he, he's, he's got something to say. I do have something to say because here's my biggest crawl at work. Okay. I don't care if if you've been in the trade for 30, 40, 50 years. I don't care. As a worker, I'm expected to, whatever your thought process is on working on a project, I'm supposed to make your thought process come to fruition. Right. That means you're giving me the information I want you to get from point A to point B with either wire, pipe, whatever it may be. Make this happen. My job is to go make that happen. When I come to you with a question on said project and it wasn't covered in your initial outline and you don't give me an answer, then that's when I have a problem with you because what were you doing? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I get a lot and I and that's where I have a problem with a lot of forming. What were you doing? You were sitting there and you gave me direction. And you were looking at the prints, and you had the prints spelled out in front of you. You're not allowing me to look at the same information you that every that you've been looking at. So I can't. I don't have all the information, so I can't make this judgment. But when I have a question, answer it. And that's my that's my biggest problem. It's fine to question. It's fine to point out all these things, Tim. You're right. But when the, now I'm tying this all in. On the construction of this roster, we knew that we were going to have more holes than Swiss cheese. What would you have done differently? I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Who? Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. Sorry. It just kind of fit perfectly. Oh, no, it did fit perfectly. I am saying this, and I've said this before. I am giving the Giants a pass for the entire 2022 season. I'm giving them a pass. I'm going to go to the games. I'm going to cheer. I think there's going to be some ugly games. I think we're going to lose sometimes 42-17. And I'll be shocked that we scored 17 points. But I'm still going to go. I'm just saying this. There are things that I would have done differently. I would have drafted a center. Because of the fact that I can't look at this roster and in and, and, and good conscience as well, Nick Gates might come back. I would, have, I would not have changed anything they did with the first two picks. I would not have taken Wondell Robinson. I've said that before. I think there was other receivers available who could have been actual outside receivers, not what some refer to Wandel as gimmick players. I would have tried to build some continuity on the offensive line since I have now my bookend tackles. And I would have tried to build some consistency in the secondary because of the fact that, I mean, you have a Dory Jackson. Do we have a Dory? Is a Dory, will a Dory Jackson be? 2019 Adore Jackson, or is he going to be the injury filled 2020 Adore Jackson? Or is he going to be the guy that in 2021 that took an extended period of time to come back? You have a you have a defense predicated on pressure. Your pressure is only going to be as reliable as your secondary. And Yusef Corker, starting at safety for me, does not give me the warm and fuzzies. But like I said, I'm giving the Giants a pass. You can you can have the whole 2022 season. Do what and you may. And that's you fine. Take care. Do what you want, but listen, I'm still going to question shit. No, and and that and that's fair. And you know what? At the end of the day, what just happened is Tim was my foreman. I went to him with a question, and he gave me an answer. I may not like the answer. I may not agree with the answer, but he gave me an answer, and I can accept that. All right. I'm a foreman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jerry, get back to work. Put that lunch pail down. No. Oh, close. I quit. <laughs> you can't cook because you want to know why? Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. All right, everyone. We're going to wrap this up. It is now 44 minutes in. Uh, just a little house cleaning stuff. OGR Sports, Online Big Blue Sports, James Williams, and blank will be at the Bengals preseason game, August 21st, 
first to Jane's. We will be in the parking lot somewhere in the red lot. We'll 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 break down where that's going to be. And we also, of course, are going to be doing the 40-yard challenge in reference to online Big Blue standing on the 35-yard line on the field after the game and dropping a perfect pass five yards deep in the end zone to James Williams. See, I didn't put the pressure on you to catch it. <laughs> you will be filming, but I didn't put well, the pressure that's on That's pressure you. enough. That's pressure enough. Because you yeah, know what's going to end up happening. I'm going to start up here and then go to pan to pan, <laughs> pan <laughs> James and I and I won't find him and we're gonna have to do it again. You better find him. You better find him. So I, we're gonna do something with charity for this. I haven't decided exactly what we're gonna do yet, but we're gonna do something for charity. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Someone asked me, you know, are you ready for this? Have you have you even tried to throw the ball forty yards? <laughs> Why would I try? Why would I try that? He's gonna be prepared as as much as he is as he is for this show. Look, I I've I've gotten the guns. I'm getting the guns. Wait, here we go. You know, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been in the gym, so I'm getting the guns back up. So I'm getting the guns back up there. My shoulders are huge again, so I think I can more than throw that ball 40 yards. But I'm just gonna throw it 40 because I don't want to show everyone up. I just want to show. Up. So what do you think? Well, at, well, let me ask you, what's your max? <sighs> 20. <you> really <laughs> 20. <laughs> 25, baby. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I think my max is 40. I do. So I'm going to try to extend my max. And I'm going to drop a perfect spiral to James Williams. And I'm going to do one throw. That's how ballsy this is. I'm doing one throw. Standing on the home 35. And it has to be five yards deep in the end zone. Five yards deep in the end zone. Because I was going to ask you. Where you stand on, will you be standing on the 40? That would be a 45 yard pass. Yes. No. <laughs> standing on 35. <laughs> standing on, who knows? Who knows? I will tell you this. I was dropping some bombs the other day in the backyard. So your, your flatulence coming out of your end doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> That's because, <laughs> listen, everyone's going to, I'm going to shock the world. A 50 plus year old. No, no, you're gonna you are gonna shock the online big blues. The a, a 50 year old is over 50 year old is gonna stand on the 35 and drop a perfect pass. One throw. All the watch money. You, watch you're gonna give it to me after and be like, duplicate that OGR just to prove it. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna be telling you, you know what, OGR? What I need you to do is I'm gonna put the camera on me as I throw. And then wait, just look at the ball in the air, but then just take a second. And James is going to have another ball behind his shirt. <laughs> Make sure you cut to James after he pulls the ball out from underneath the shirt. Uh, oh. <laughs> but it, it's going to be fun. And we are going to give a ticket away. So you get to hang out in the coaches club with us. So we have, we have one ticket to give away. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to so be is fun. That, is that, is that going to be given to a subscriber? <sighs> Someone said to me, you should give it away to a content creator. And I said, okay, let me think about this. No. O OGR barely likes me. <laughs> and then there, and then oh, there's that's, bu that's bullshit. Okay. That's <laughs> bullshit. We're fine now. And then there's, and then who else? Let me think here. There's so many other people that just love me. <laughs> so. Unless they're unless they're a new content creator, because <laughs> I don't think that's good enough to get it. <laughs> yeah, me and Kid Blue are gonna hang out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, honestly, if you offered it, I think you may. I mean, you may not like it, but he might the problem is it. also I have to want to hang out with someone for four hours. Actually, well, more. It, gives, it gives you it gives you plenty of time to get to know the person. No. It's not like there's going to be so much excitement on the field. That it, there's you know, three three season. You got Joe Burrows. He's going to play. You got Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, I think he's going to play the first quarter. I have a feeling. You only have three preseason games this year. And I Honestly, think we I think you should play the first saw, half. I think we saw what happened during the COVID lockout when we didn't have any preseason games. The A amount of injuries, the B, the slop you play. USFL looked better in some of the games. That I watched that first couple of weeks, and without we had zero preseason. Correct. 
All right, we're all correct, so we're gonna end the show right there. Uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any final thoughts you want to add, Mister OGR? What I'm thinking here. No, I think we pretty much covered it. I, I know we should possibly ramble on for another hour, but that's not. Oh, I can ramble. I can ramble on for another day and a half. <laughs> If you don't know, you gotta like I said, you gotta come and check this out for us. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be exciting. And again, this is Tim from Online Big Boo Sports, OGR Sports, bringing you the best of New York Giant Sports Talk at three twelve and one. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate you tuning in. And you know what? We will see you next week. Peace out, everyone. <laughs>